Let's talk about how you can transition to the post-grad life after college. Congratulations, you just completed four years of college and now you're thinking about how you should transition to your post-grad life. Whether or not you have a job, here are a couple tips of what I have learned to be most helpful after I started my career working at Google, Lucid, and now consulting. Tip number one, dealing with the pressure of finding a full-time job, trying to balance your social life and your professional life. I remember when I was looking for my first full-time job, I had this pressure to work at the top companies. I had this pressure to work at the best roles just because of what my friends and parents parents might have thought. I come from a first generation Korean American household. So brand recognition was so, so, so big throughout the whole job process. If there's anything I learned about friend and family gossip is that it eventually goes away. Know that it's okay to not have your dream job the first swing around. You might feel like you're less successful than your peers. You might feel like you're one step behind. Some of my friends had no jobs six months after college and now they're working at top companies like Facebook and Google. Everyone has their own timeline. Don't forget that yours is yours. The job search burnout. If you're looking for a job, chances are you've run into this problem. You're applying to 15 roles a day. You're networking with three alumni every week. You might even be landing interviews, but you receive the we appreciate your applications. But the job search process by definition is a very, very, very emotional process. You have to go through a thousand no's for you to get that one yes. If you're feeling burnt out, this is what I would do. Go onto Google Calendar, set up a time block for your job search. 30 minutes every day, 30 minutes every two days. Make sure you're purely focused on the job search during those time blocks. Job applications, networking, working on your resume. Only focus your time on your job search during that time block, nothing else. The reason why this is so helpful is because this mitigates burnout. You need to be able to separate out your personal life and all your job search strategies. The more you can create a boundary between your personal and professional life, the easier it'll be for you to actually find motivation for your job. At the end of the day, for you to find a job, it really is a function of two things. One is how much effort you put in and two, how much time you put in. If you're doing both, it's just a matter of time. By the way, if you're liking this video so far, comment down your biggest struggles and we'll help you get through them. Tip number three, if you are lucky enough to have a full-time job by now, the number one most important thing that you should do during your role is network. A mentor once told me the best time to look for a job is when you don't need a job because at that point you can be as picky as you possibly want. So if you never want to recruit again, if you never want to have to send out another job application again, network, send those personalized invites on people on LinkedIn, make sure you follow up, keep that relationship alive because that's what's going to separate you from every other candidate. Tip number four, dealing with your manager. Your manager by far is going to be one of the most important people that you have to connect with as you think about growing your career. I remember when I first started my career at Google, I had two managers within the first three months. My second manager, however, she and I clicked so well. She not only mentored me, but most importantly, she gave me opportunities that I never thought I would get. So to create a strong relationship with your manager, do three things. Set up a weekly one-on-one -on -one chat with your manager to talk a little bit about your projects, but more importantly, talk about some of your struggles that you might be going through. Is there a project that you're thinking about? Is there a technical hurdle that you can't get through? Whatever it is, make sure you use your manager as your mentor. The second thing that you should do is set up biannual or quarterly performance check-ins. It is so important for you to be aligned about your performance with your manager because you want to know whether or not you're going to get promoted before you're even promoted. What am I doing well? What am I not doing well? And what are the areas that you would like me to grow in? And last but not least, make sure you have fun with your manager. Create inside jokes, poke fun at them. At the end of the day, don't forget that they're human. Tip number five, have fun. I think it's so easy for when you start your career that you just jump right in and you don't take any time for yourself. As important as work is in your early career, as important as it is for you to grind while you're young and hustle and all those buzzwords, it's equally as important for you to be making those memories. You're only in your 20s once. So go out there, travel, go to those concerts, be a yes person and make those memories. Also be sure to invite me. <laughs> Comment down your biggest struggles as a post-grad and we got you. Until next time, peace. <laughs>